Hello again. It's been a little while and I'm happy to say I've made substantial progress on my initial fixture library development sprint, as you can see on screen here. A little while back, I determined that the GLP Impression FR1 would be a good candidate as a new more modern beam to replace the Sharpie as a default moving head for virtual event production, in that it specifically trades the Sharpie's color wheel for a straightforward RGBW color mix, rather than carrying over the color wheel's real-world limitations into virtual events. I've modeled and implemented a GLP Impression FR1, and then right before I started coding, uh, about halfway through the sprint, Unreal Fest actually happened with some great breakout sessions, and from some of the discussions there that followed, while I previously had some prior ideas of my own as far as making it easier to code new fixtures, uh, I've learned through that that as part of the major DMX feature rework for the upcoming 4.26 release, the team at Geodesic and Epic are moving to a DMX parameter component approach, in addition to moving much of the code to C++ with a major focus on improving CPU performance, which presently does not scale very well on 425, both with the sample blueprints and indeed with my initial uh, blueprint pass on my own parameter components, all of which are highly single-thread by virtue of operating within blueprints. Given that the workflow in 426 is moving to parameter components though, and indeed abandoning a parent fixture class altogether, I saw fit to at least give that workflow a try myself, and with how fast this has come together along with how flexible it is, I definitely agree this is truly the way forward. That said, while I have not added per frame interpolation or re-implemented shutter, which relies on the presence of interpolation, the FR1 shown here is otherwise feature complete to the best of my knowledge. Here you can see the present limitations. If I switch the base position cues, it just kind of jumps immediately. While for the effects, the lighting desk generates them at 30 ticks per second, so those are pretty smooth. But that said, it is possible to work around that in the lighting console simply by leveraging the exact time or the master fade time on a lighting console like so. So in dot two, this is accessible in the magic button of the command section. And then there's this exact time fader, which you can move with a fader, or you can sort of bind it to an executor by sort of clicking the store button and then clicking a new executor. And then um, it will prompt you for the executor type and you can choose, uh, you know, speed and a couple of options. So, um, and you can also sort of specify a uh, specific time by clicking this button here. So in general, that makes it way more usable. So moving forward, I intend to translate all of these components to C++ to improve their performance, as well as add interpolation, shutter, and potentially look at other fixtures. While all of this development here has been available at the $20 patron tier while I've been working on it, as I stated before, uh, this will be re releasing to the public GitHub in the description on the first of the month. Definitely want to get this in people's hands since this new modular approach will make it way easier to basically Lego together custom fixtures once you have some decent geometry for your fixture. As such, my goal with this release is to provide a starting point on which we can make a large range of blueprint components that are generally optimized into C++. And then from there, the goal is for me to be able to receive and approve community submitted pull requests against the public Git repo containing new DMX parameter components and possibly even entire fixture blueprints, as long as you can demonstrate that you own and can legally distribute the fixture meshes as part of the library. Likewise, as I said before, the last two weeks of the month have been focused more on client work, and I've indeed been keeping rather busy this week with meetings and such. However, I'm probably going to tweak my broader development schedule over time. I'm thinking of switching the fixture library sprints to the middle two weeks of the month, and then bookending that with more client work instead as that picks up. Because doing that will give me at least a one week period between public library updates and starting another sprint to give me some time to gather feedback. And then that will also still leave a week of Patreon uh, early access to those at the $20 tier and above. There may also be weeks where I need to change a week over from library development to client work or vice versa if things are particularly busy or slow. However, I'll make an effort to be transparent if or when this type of thing comes up. As of now, the Patreon has had a pretty good start so far, and I'm thankful to all of my patrons so far. This is still a bit of an experiment, and I'm happy to give specific shoutouts to patrons that want it, and I may add that uh, to the reward tiers as we go. 
but I also want to be understanding if anyone wants to keep things a little more, more private uh, and keep a lower profile. I'll probably add a Patreon poll to see if there's a consensus as far as adding the shoutouts to the formal rewards. That's pretty much all I have for now. Um, you can find the GitHub repo and the Patreon in the description. So thanks. Have a great day.